So in this presentation, we are going to discuss about the different bacterial diseases that affects farm tilapia. So this uh, presentation was um, presented by Hatan Dong of the Faculty of Science and Technology, Suwan Sunanda Rajabat University, under the FAO, or the Food and Agriculture Organization, uh, publication. So he presented the, the different bacterial diseases of farm tilapia. So this is the illustration of the different pathogens that affects farm tilapia. So this was, this was uh, from Dr. Marian McLuhan. So as you can see here, majority of the pathogens that affects farm tilapia are bacteria. That accounts for about 54.9%, followed by viruses at 22.6%, parasites, and fungi. These are the different bacterial diseases in farm tilapia as presented no, in the Food and Agriculture Organization. To start with, uh, let's start with the bacterial disease no, of farm tilapia known as streptococcus. These are the different causative agents of streptococcus. No, the most common of this is the streptococcus agalaxiae. We also have the Streptococcus NA, Streptococcus discalaxiae, Lactococcus garvi, and Aerococcus viridans. Uh, this pathogen is a gram-positive gram bacteria. For the Streptococcus agalaxiae, we have four serotypes, the 1A, 1B, 2, and 3. We also have a newly reported serotype in China, and that is the serotype 9. For the clinical signs, the tilapia affected with streptococcus exhibit erratic swimming. There is also the popping of the eyes, as you can see here. It is also known as um, exophthalmia or exophthalmus. There is also the darkening of the skin and the loss of appetite. Internally, we have a swollen gallbladder. There is also the, the brown in dark areas in the liver, and ascites. For the diagnostics, the level 2 diagnostics include rapid gram staining of smeared tissue. So the tissue of interest are the blood, the kidney, the liver, and the brain. This is a gram staining of a smeared ki kidney infected with streptococcus. For the le another level 2 diagnostics include histopathology. Uh, so we have here a liver and a pancreas of Nile tilapia that is infected with S uh, Streptococcus agalaxiae. So we have here the pancreas and we have here the liver. So in the liver, it shows hyperactivation of the melanomacrophage centers with uh, overloaded melanophores. So this is in the pancreas. There is also a severe hepatocyte degeneration and accumulation of melanophores in the liver. So this section here you know, in this exocrine pancreas shows the proliferation of the melanomacrophage centers in the pancreas or in the exocrine pancreas of the Nile tilapia infected with streptococcus. Another level 2 diagnostics is bacterial culture and biochemical test. So these are the media that can be used for bacterial isolation or bacterial culture. And this is the uh, description of the colonies of the streptococcus in the bacterial culture. For the mortality, the mortality is high. Uh, the mortality rather is variable, but it can reach up to 90%. The streptococcus is worldwide in distribution. The risk factors for the disease include a high temperature, particularly a temperature that ranges from 31 to 33 degrees centigrade and also a poor water quality is a risk factor for 
streptococcus. For the prevention, this include treating the water with disinfectants, controlling the water temperature, for example, increasing the water level in the pond, supplying more oxygen or increase in the aeration, improving the fish immunity by administration of vitamin C and uh, immunostimulants. There is also a vaccine that is uh, currently available for streptococcus. We have the injectable vaccine by SM, uh, MSD that is uh, used in Thailand. We also have the immersion vaccine that is used in China and the vaccine incorporated with feed or oral route that is used in Malaysia. The next bacterial disease of tilapia is the columnaris. The causative agent of columnaris is the Flavobacterium columnari. It is a gram-negative, long rod-shaped bacterium. It exhibits gliding motility. It forms strong biofilm, and it has two morphotypes. We, we have the rhizoid morphotype, which is the pathogenic one, and the non-rhizoid morphotype, which is the non-pathogenic one. So this is the, this, uh, the illustration of our gram-negative flavobacterium bacteria in bacterial culture. This is also you know, another diagram you know, showing the description of the pathogenic and the non-pathogenic morphotype of Flavobacterium columnari. This is the pathogenic one, the rhizoid morphotype, and this is the non-pathogenic one. For the clinical signs of columnaris, now this include the fin rot. So as you can see here, the fin, the fin of the fish now exhibit rotting. There is also the necrotic gills now as shown here you know, in this figure. The gills exhibit necrosis. There is also the necrosis of the muscles. Uh, there is also the presence of the saddleback lesion now, as you can see here. The lesion is located at the back of the tilapia. And there is also the pale skin. Diagnostics include wet mounts. So in the wet mount, uh, so this is a uh, the, this wet mount here is a portion of the saddleback lesion of the tilapia. So the wet mount of the saddleback lesion revealed clumps of long rod shaped bacteria you know, that is the causative agent of columnaris. For the another level two diagnostics is the rapid gram staining of smeared tissue. So the tissue that can be used are the gills and the skin lesion. Another level two diagnostics is the histopathology. This is a, a rapid gram staining of the smeared tissue of tilapia that is uh, infected with columnaris disease. This uh, diagram here represents the histopathology of the gills of the fish infected with Flavobacterium columnari. Level 3 diagnostics include specific PCR for either tissue or the pure isolate of the bacteria. We also have the bacterial culture plus sequencing of the 16S or RNA. So this uh, diagram here you know, refers to the uh, bacterial isolation of the Fuso, uh, Flavobacterium columnari. We also have here the specific PCR for Flavobacterium 
uh, columnary. For the mortality of the fishes or the tilapia infected with columnary, so it, it is variable. It can reach up to 100% in challenge experiments. It is worldwide in distribution. For the risk factors, so the disease usually occurs after the transportation of the fish. Cage culture is more susceptible than pond culture. Prevention include sodium chloride at 10 ppt or parts per thousand. It can prevent or control the disease. So this is the concentration, the, the 10 ppt here or the 10 parts per thousand here represents the concentration of salt or sodium chloride in water. There is no commercial vaccine available for tilapia to treat this particular bacterial disease. The next one here is the francesilosis. The causative agent of francesilosis in tilapia is francesella nuatonensis subspecies orientalis or FNO. This is previously known as rickettsia like organism, RLO, or PC rickettsia like organism. This is a fastidious intracellular bacteria. It is a gram negative and it exhibits an uh, oval shape. Uh, since this is a fastidious type of bacteria, it requires cysteine for its growth. And the optimum temperature for its growth is 25 to 28 degree centigrade. So this diagram here is the uh, illustration of the gram staining of the Francisella nuatonensis orientalis. For the clinical signs of Francisellosis of tilapia, so this include the pale body. There is also the presence of white spots or white nodules on different tissues, such as the spleen, the head, the, the kidney, you know, the head kidney, the trunk kidney, as well as the gills. There is also the loss of appetite of the tilapia. So these are the illustration or images of tilapia infected with francesilosis. So you, as you can see here, there is you now the presence of white nodules on different organs. For the level 2 diagnostics of francesilosis, this include the wet mount, not the wet mount that, is, uh, that uses the spleen and the gills as a specimen. We also have the rapid staining. So this one here represents the wet mount of a fish that is infected with tilapia, uh, that, that is infected with francesilosis and the normal fish. We also have here the rapid staining of smeared head kidney with gem sustain revealed the presence of both intra and extracellular bacteria. You have here the intra and the extracellular bacteria. Another level 2 diagnostics is the histopathology wherein there is the presence of granulomas in multiple organs. We also have the in situ hybridization or the ISH using FNO specific probe. So we have here the histopathology of uh, the spleen of tilapia infected with francesilosis. So this is a micrograph of uh, HNE stain sections of the spleen showing. Here, you know, the typical granulomas that can be found in the spleen of tilapia infected with francesilosis. So you can see here the typical granuloma lesions in the spleen. 
Another advanced uh, diagnostics for francisolosis is the detection of the FNO from the fish tissue via these advanced techniques known such as PCR. We also have the ISH, ISH, immunohistochemistry, duplex PCR, color, colorimetric lamp, and the uh, recombinase polymerase amplification. So as you can see here, now we have here the, the PCR method, wherein the, the DNA of the pathogen is being examined for its uh, identification. So these uh, lines here you know, would represent the protein that is being examined you know, in order to identify the specific species of pathogen that uh, infect the tilapi. We also have here uh, another level 3 diagnostics is the culture plus the specific PCR and culture plus the sequencing of the 16S or RNA. So this, he, uh, this method here you know, is the culture, you know, the bacterial culture of Francisolosis FNO on the cysteine heart agar. And we also have here the sequencing. Sequencing method for the identification of the pathogen. This is the geographical distribution of Francisolosis, no, particularly the Francisella notonensis orientalis FNO and the Francisella notonensis notonensis. So as you can see here, most common uh, pathogen, no, Francisella pathogen is the FNO no, or the Francisella notonensis orientalis. So it is worldwide in distribution. No, it is present in different uh, regions. Now, for example, we have here in Southeast Asia, in uh, China, in Japan, in Europe, in uh, Latin America, and in North America. So for the mortality of francisolosis, so it ranges from 40 to 50 percent. It is a bit lower. It is lower you know, compared to the previous one, previous bacterial diseases of tilapia. Uh, for the risk factors, the disease outbreaks were associated with cool season. That is a season that ha that is uh, less than 28 degrees centigrade in temperature. A uh, very chronic disease outbreaks depend on environmental factors. For the prevention and treatment of the disease, so for those that are engaged in tilapia farming. So it is important to use FNO-free fish. Antibiotics have also been used for the treatment. Temperature uh, that is, uh, it should be more than 30, 30 degrees centigrade you know, because again, one of the risk factor is the cool season. Commercial vaccine is not available for this uh, bacterial disease. Another bacterial disease of tilapia is the Edward Shilosis. The causative agent of this is the Edward Shella ectaluri, Tarda, Angularum, and Pisida. So this is a pinpoint uh, in culture media, the Edward Shella exhibit pinpoint colonies. In terms of their shape, you now this is a uh, rod shape and it is a gram-negative bacteria. Uh, biochemically, it is uh, oxidase-negative. So aside from tilapia, Edward Shilosis, particularly the Edward Shella ectaluri, is also common in catfish. It is, it is not really common in non-catfish and does not kill tilapia in striped catfish ponds.
according no, to the personal observation of uh, author. In 2012, the first report of Ek Edward Shella Ektaluri was uh, reported or was recorded in uh, Nile Tilapia in the Western Hemisphere. We also have here the recent cases of Edward Chilosis in Southeast Asia. So, this was reported in Red Tilapia Jovenis. It killed about 40 to 50 percent of the fish in the first month after stocking, and the presence of white spots in multiple organs are the manifestations. So the presumptive diagnosis is based on the clinical signs, so that is a level one diagnostics, no? the presence of the clinical signs. So as you can see here, there is the presence of white spots in multiple organs. We also have the diagnostics is the uh, use of PCR. Another level two diagnostics is the use of gram staining tissue, a uh, gram staining. So gram stain tissue smear revealed numerous gram negative rod shaped bacteria. Uh, we have here you know, a diagram of the gram staining, staining of a tissue smear of tilapia infected with Edward Shilosis. We also have the bacterial isolation uh, that, exhib that exhibits no pure pinpoint colonies on PSA or NA. So gram-negative rod-shaped bacteria no, that is uh, exhibited no, in bacterial isolation. So it exhibits the pinpoint colonies. Another uh, more advanced diagnostics is to PCR. So this is, this is considered to be uh, confirmatory diagnostics, you know, the use of specific PCR and the uh, sequencing of the RNA. We also have here the challenge you know, experiments fulfill the Cox postulate, so in different studies. In uh, specific studies, we have here the The experiments that was conducted in order to in order to reveal you know, the presence of the infection in tilapia. So in challenge experiments, the fish reproduced the same clinical signs. 95 to 100 percent mortality was exhibited in 3 to 9 percent, and the mortality was considered to be dose dependent. So this is the lesions that are present no, in the fish experimentally infected with Edward Shilosis. So we have here you know, the spleen showing the, uh, the presence here of spots or white spots. We also have here you know, the histopathological features of Edward Shilosis in the experimental fish. Edward Shella ectaluri is considered to be an emerging pathogen of tilapia aquaculture in Southeast Asia. When we say emerging, no, that is a pathogen that is new, but uh, it it poses a threat no, to the to this particular industry. No, in this case, we have the tilapia farming. So the Philippines is uh, under you know, the Southeast Asia. And while Shella ectaluri infections in tilapia may have been overlooked due to similar clinical signs between francisellosis and Edward Shilosis. As you can notice here, this particular bacterial disease now both exhibit the presence of the white spots in multiple organs, now particularly here, the kidney, the spleen, in this diagram. It should be put on disease watch list in tilapia farming countries. So this is the important part here. Now for veterinarians, it is important to be aware 
that this particular disease is an emerging no, pathogen for tilapia. So it should be uh, listed into uh, under no, the watch list in tilapia farming countries. So another bacterial disease of farm tilapia is the hemorrhagic septicemia. So hemorrhagic septicemia you know, is not only present in other animals, but it is also present in fishes. This uh, for in the case you know, of tilapia or in the case of uh, the aquaculture industry, hemorrhagic septicemia is caused by the aeromonads, you know, particularly the motil aeromonads. So these are the causative agent of hemorrhagic septicemia in fishes or in tilapia. We have the Aeromonas hydropila, Veroni, John Day, Schuberti, and the Dacensis. Aeromonas or Aeromonas are gram-negative bacteria. They are rod or oval shape. They are non-spore forming and they are oxidase and catalase positive. This is the gram staining of the Aeromonas species. These are the clinical signs of hemorrhagic septicemia in fish, no, particularly in tilapia. So as you can notice here, this, there is a presence of hemorrhages in the different parts, external and the internal parts of the tilapia. For the diagnostics, uh, this include uh, histopathology and the bacterial culture plus the biochemical test. So these are you know, the biochemical test. Now in these, these are the histopathologic sections of the fish. No, it's infected with hemorrhagic septicemia. For the level 3 diagnostics, uh, this include specific PCR for either fish tissue or pure isolate. Misidentification is common in aeromonas group. Bacterial culture is also one no, under this. Plus sequencing of the 16S rRNA or MLST. Another bacterial disease of farm tilapia is the red egg disease or the hahelosis. Hahelosis or the red egg disease is caused by Hahela chehuensis. It is a gram negative bacteria, it is a rod shaped bacteria, and it exhibits, it is a red pigmented no, in uh, description. It is considered to be a marine bacterium. For the level 1 diagnostics, now this is the illustration or the image of the eggs of the fish you know, or the tilapia infected with the hyalosis. So this is here is the normal eggs. This one here you know, is the eggs of the, the fish infected with the high losses. So you can see here the presence of the red X. Another level 2 diagnostics is the uh, performing histology or uh, histopathology and the bacterial isolation. So this is the bacterial isolation using the TSA and uh, we have here the histopathology of a red egg no, versus the normal egg. So this is a semitin section stained with toluidine blue. Level 3 diagnostics include sequencing and uh, PCR. For the geographical distribution, uh, in the year 2010, or the the or the red egg disease is reported you know, in tilapia hatcheries in Thailand 
no, since the year 2010. It is uh, recently found in the rabbit fish in Vietnam, but this is unreported. For the mortality, mortality is uh, about 10 to 50 percent, and these are the risk factors. This occurs during the cold season, particularly a temperature of less than 24 percent. This also occurred in hatcheries using 7 ppt um, sodium chloride water. So this is a 7 ppt here, refers to the concentration of salt in the water. For the disease control, it is important to reduce the salinity you know, from 7 ppt to 4 ppt. Expose sand from the filter system to sunlight. So, uh, for example, those that are using sand, it is important no, to expose it to sunlight. Wrap the hatcheries with plastic to in increase the temperature to 30 degree centigrade. According to reports, the losses you know, due to this particular bacterial disease reaches about $600,000 per year. And this calculation is based on 30% mortality from this particular bacterial disease. Another uh, bacterial disease of farm tilapia is the epitheliocystis disease. This is caused by chlamydia like organism or CLO. This particular disease or bacterial disease affects mainly the gills of the infected fish. It is sometimes associated with mortality in tilapia fry and fingerlings. Diagnostics include wet mount of the gills, filaments, or histology. So we have here you know, the fresh mount you know, showing the heavy infection of the CLO or the chlamydia like organism in the gills of the fish. Epitheliocystis disease was also reported in Nile tilapia in Brazil. For the diagnostics, now this include the histopathology. So this is the histopathologic section of the tissue section of the Nile tilapia in Brazil, as reported by Padua in the year 2014. We also have here a tissue section, histopathologic section of from a red tilapia in Thailand, as reported by H. T. Dong, showing here the chlamydia-like organisms in the tissue section. For the miscellaneous disease in tilapia, so this includes uh, concurrent infections of five bacteria no, and a virus in cultured tilapia farm. Uh, examples of this, no, we have a concurrent infection of the A. veroni, no, the Aeromonas veroni, and the uh, Flavobacterium columnari. Uh, we are considered to be dominant and exhibited high virulence. So some of the bacterial disease no, can be present uh, concurrently or at the same time with another disease. So for example, we have here the A. veroni can be present no, together with the F columnary. So that is that, that infection will be more dominant and it will be more highly virulent. So we also have here you know, another um, co-infection or natural co-infection between uh, Streptococcus agalaxiae and the FNO or the Francisella notonensis orientalis in farm tilapia in Nile tilapia. So this was uh, reported you know, in um, the Journal of Fish Diseases in the year 2016. So we also have here another study you know, showing a case of natural co-infection of the tilapia lake virus and Aeromonas veroni in Malaysian red hybrid tilapia farm experiencing high mortality. So in this case, we have here a co-infection between a bacteria, Aeromonas veroni, and a virus 
tilapia lake virus in uh, red hybrid tilapia. And this was published in the Aquaculture Journal. So we also have here you know, another uh, co-infection of Flavobacterium columnari and Francisella nuatonensis orientalis. Uh, we also have here you know, another uh, co-infection between Flavobacterium columnari and Saprolagnia species. So in this case, now we have here the rotting of the pins.